I watched a video from the Samurai Carpenter where he made a router jig for joinery that can be used on small pieces and also on very big pieces. I quite like this design, so I made my own version of this. And I will link you his video in the video description. And now I'm going to show you how I built my version of it. And after that, a few examples how it's being used. The base plate is a 30 cm square, 10 mm thick piece of polycarbonate. And after finding the center, I drilled a hole there for alignment. Next, transferring the mounting holes from the original base plate. In my case, it's also already homemade. Then a recess for the screw heads and an oversized through hole. I could then use the mounting holes from the router base to screw it to the CNC table. Then I could align the bit with the center hole from the beginning and start routing. The CNC cut four slots along all four edges and then all around to cut it to a 30 cm square with round corners. Now after the CNC work, the best part of the project is already there. Next, chamfering all edges. This is done. Next, the two fences. I've prepared two pieces of hardwood that are as long as the polycarbonate is wide. And I've marked the ends, that's where the slots need to be. I made the slots by drilling both ends and then drilling in between as far as possible. The rest is done with chisels. Making the ends of the slot square now allows a carriage bolt to travel the full length of the slot. With a wash and nut on both ends and because of the double slot I get a lot of travel and when I'm at the end of the slot in the polycarbonate I can switch the bolt to the next slot and get more travel. And just when I had finished that I had a bad idea to mount the fences. Cutting threads with an M8 metal tab into the wood is a lot simpler. And for this job, M8 threads in hardwood is so much more than enough. And now I just need a knob to fasten it. I could use a store-bought knob, but I made my own and I embedded a magnet right here. And that holds a washer in place. And now when I'm at the end of travel in one slot, the second threaded hole is already in the next slot. And now I have more travel that way. What I like about this over the solution with the slots is that when I have to change the slot here, I would have to take out the bolt and the knob with the washer. And here I just have to take out the knob and I can do everything from the top. And that means less fiddling with parts, which makes it easier to use and everything that's easier to use will get used more often. Then I also made the fences in a thinner version out of birch plywood and because I thought it would be great to screw the first ones up, I made them twice. What a success. The last thing I made was a cutout in one of the fences and that allows to move one fence over the road a bit. And now a quick demonstration. Let's say I want to have a slot centered in this piece. I've marked the dimensions onto the piece. Now comes the router with the jig and since of the big base it is pretty stable on there. Now I can lower the bit to the surface of the wood and align the edge of the bit with one line. And sliding the first fence to the piece and tighten it. And then the second fence. 
and like this it's now very well guided. I set the depth and I'm ready to route. Now turning the piece around, or the jig around, set it back in place and route the other side. Let's see how centered this is. I would say that's good enough. Let's make a matching tenon. For the tenon I will only need one fence. Then again placing the router onto the piece, plunging to the surface, align the edge of the bit with my mark and align the fence with the end of the piece. What's really cool is that I can hold the jig at the base plate. That gives me a lot more control over the router than with the handles. Let's see if that already fits. Yes. Seems like I got lucky. Hmm. Actually I wanted this to be too tight so I can adjust the depth of cut and make a second pass. But that's pretty good. Then again some chisel work to make the mortise square. And it plops when you pull it apart. Now let's say I don't want the slot to be centered, but offset to one side. I again line up the edge of the bit with the line and tighten the back fence. And then I align the other edge of the bit with the line and tighten the front fence. I didn't quite hit the front line. Let's make a tiny adjustment. And it's done. Last example, let's say I want to have a 10 mm wide rabbit in this edge. Therefore I only need to use one fence with the cutout. If you watched the video from the Samurai Carpenter, he has a few more examples of using this jig. Now this jig doesn't always make sense, for example these small test pieces, there are many other different ways you could achieve the same result quicker and maybe also easier, but here you can bring the piece to the tool and if the pieces are big then you need to bring the tool to the piece and then this jig will shine. When I watched a video from the Samurai Carpenter of this jig, I saw the potential of it for my future projects and that's why I built my version of it. I will link a printable template, SVG and DXF file of my base plate if you want to replicate it with or without the CNC. That was a fail. Making the end of the slot square now allows a carriage bolt to travel the whole uh, width length 